Um, yesterday, we were talking about building around this interaction. Fear of missing out plus Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. If you, if you don't know, uh, you can copy a FOMO with your Kiki Jiki, make a copy of it, and then attack with it. Then you could untap the Kiki Jiki, copying the FOMO, basically giving you infinite combat steps and infinite damage, two damage at a time. Um, I think it is a pretty interesting interaction and like like largely when you have a card that is just like a modern staple at this point fear of missing out is just one of the best uh two drops in modern incredibly good uh very very dominant uh when it combos infinitely with one other card that's pretty interesting pretty dang interesting uh indeed now i was looking at a lot of different shells for this we i had some I had I had like several mono red shells and like just basically every mono red shell. I'm like, I'm a one ring arena of glory deck. <laughs> or you usually I was a one ring arena of glory deck. Why do I why am I not splashing for flage? And so I'm looking at being a Boros build. I was looking at some green red builds with Woodlands and Malevolent Rumble, and I really wanted to stay away from those variants because we've just played in like, ooh, a, ooh, a two-card combo. Let's Woodland Rumble it. So, you can still maybe do that, but I wanted to start somewhere else. I had some Naya builds, too, for a little bit. Um, I also spent some time... <laughs> I spent some time thinking that uh, giving FOMO Vigilance was also an infinite combo, which uh, is not... You only, get to, you only get to untap the first time this individual thing attacks. But if you make a copy, it's a new, new game object. Um, so, anyways, I was looking at this Boros build, and I was kind of looking at ways to make Kiki Jiki less bad. Uh, and then I kind of ended up realizing that Jolted Awake is just, like, an awesome card to tie the room together. Where you can, like, loot away your Kiki Jiki sometimes with your fear of missing out, or it could die and you could Jolted Awake it. Um, to, <laughs> to, to make a Kiki Jiki not quite as embarrassing a card in your list. And then, after I started playing more with Jolted Awake, I'm like, Jolted Awake is really 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 good in this in this uh <laughs> in this shell um not only is it reanimating kiki jiki super effectively it has been very good to get back the ring and it is also like like th this card is like something that can reanimate kiki jiki the ring fear of missing out channeler but it could also just be a tune the narrative if you're like reanimating a mistress bobble you can go turn one bobble Jolted Awake Your Bobble, and then you can even, like, turn two Kiki Jiki if you go Aether Hub Rafter. It's obviously, like, a lot, but it does give you a lot more turn two um, Amped Raptors online. In fact, I think it's better at enabling Amped Raptor. I mean, you have to have the Bobble, but it's like, you know, it, you, you don't need your Guide of Souls to be alive to have four energy on turn two. Or, and you don't also need Aether Hub to have the four energy turn two. And it's, like, a very good top deck in the late game. So I have the title as Boros Jolted Awake because I mostly think that this shell is um, kind of more so built to highlight the power of Jolted Awake. I think the card the card has been very, very impressive to me so far in testing. It has been more so for me the breakout card than the Kiki Jiki FOMO plan. That being said, I think it plays very well with the Kiki Jiki FOMO plan. And I, I also think I think that, that FOMO is like a big part of this package. I think that um the idea of being able to loot away your ring or loot away whatever it is you want to jolt it awake um, is, and then also be able to jolt it awake your FOMO, which is a really good thing to buy back, especially if you're top decking. Uh, I think, I think that this is a big part of the package. And then, so I think it makes sense for Kiki Jiki to be like the other big thing you're getting back because it just goes infinite with your fear of missing out. But I could see, I could, I, I just want to say I could see building this kind of more red based energy shell uh differently and I, and, and that, that's that is kind of what this is you know like your your normal boros energy is more white based with guide and pride this is more red based with uh drc and fomo and uh the kiki combo is is uh, maybe another good way to to look at it uh, i also think heat is really really dang good at the moment and since we're more of a delirium shell anyways with channeler and fomo i wanted to lean a bit more into heat over static prison um you also can't um jolt it awake a static prison so let's get going Heat over Tarfire. Yeah, it's just like there's a lot of um Oculi and Psychic Frogs. And that I think I think you really want to play Heat. Get, getting so what the thing about the, the delirium and fear of missing out is you don't need to get it super duper quickly either. And it's also not too difficult to get it either. Like you you have your fetch lands, your surveil lands, your bobbles, your DRCs, your jolted awakes that go to the yard put a source in the yard pretty cheaply. Um I just I just haven't found delirium to be like too hard, too hard to get without tar fire and uh, being able to clean like answer frogs and oculi at the moment seems pretty dang important probably a little late on this 
but I, I tend I, I tend to like to pull up the the hand hider. It's probably too late, but like thirty seconds after the um uh <laughs> if it's like a thirty second pause before showing up. So there's an Arid Mesa in a pass. Let's just go and play an elegant parlor. I hope that they're not storm. But it would be nice to be able to go DRC plus heat next turn. Agree with that. Been considering a Jolted Awake Thopter Foundry deck recently. Doesn't need any other energy producers to bring back a milled combo piece. That's fair. I mean, Jolted Awake is a lot stronger if it does have good energy producers to bring back. What is this? Gorios? Domain Zoo? Domain Zoo. Okay, turn two Scion. Thankfully, no Leyline to be found. Now, let's, I think, try to set up for Delirium so we can maybe go, like, Heat plus Amtraptor next turn. Although, this is now just, uh, easy peasy Delirium. Jolted Awake Breach Station. Does it get back Breach? I mean, I, I, yes, I do, I do think we could brew around Jolted Awake a little bit more than we, we have been. I, uh, I, I played it, a l I think, a little bit before, not a ton. Okay, let's go, let's keep that ring. I'm gonna go ahead and just Heat the, um... The Scion there. If they play another creature next turn, what we can maybe do is heat it and then see if we like the top card and try to Amtraptor into it or maybe uh, get get rid of it and Amtraptor. The the presence of Bobble Raptor makes uh, the... Or so the presence of Bobble Chandler makes the Raptor bricks a little bit easier too. Spike, no Tar Fires. What? You don't want to play one Tar Fire over any Unholy Heat? So I don't play any Tar Fires over any Unholy Heat. Good morning, chat. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't want to upkeep this because I want to manipulate the top of my library uh, afterwards. And then, I, okay, I also have Jolted Awake. I could Jolted Awake Bobble, and then I could um, just have five energy to hit whatever off the Raptor. But I think I'm just going to go Heat first. Graveyard this, um, which gets stubbed. Um, if I pick up Fear of Missing Out, I, I'll put a fourth type in the yard. Okay, so we'll go ahead and play the Raptor then. Do have some bricks here. Okay, we hit a Jolted Awake. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and just discard my ring so I can Jolted Awake my ring next turn and try to double spell. I'm going to lose my Channeler to the Scion, though. Okay, another ring anyways. <laughs> I guess I guess maybe I'll just play the ring. We'll see what we draw. We'll see what they do. I, I guess kind of simply, if I can double spell, I'm probably going to try to do that. Now, notably, I also don't have my basic planes in the deck anymore, um, and I do want. I guess I guess this could maybe actually function as my other white source, but not if I jolted awake the ring. We also don't get pro everything if we uh, give back the ring. Flage, okay. Flage kill FOMO probably. The guy from Ephraim, thank you for the 31 months. Appreciate you. So hit me for four. Two cards in their hand. Uh, they have not played their land for turn yet. They don't have a land drop. Could be pretty relevant. I I guess at this point I'm just gonna cast my cast my ring and ding ding. Another land. Get in for two. Yeah, Jolted has been very good. There's a reason why it's the title card of the deck and not Kiki FOMO. Playing your blue black fearless league right now, I think the deck might be true. That's good. That's good feedback. We didn't get many reps in with it yesterday. Um I would like to play some more with it, but thank you for the the feedback. Okay, they're one card short of escaping Gigantha. They played untapped Sacred Foundry, then they put Gigantha to their hand, leaving up Xander's Lounge. So this is representing, of course, a stubborn denial. Now let me go ahead and just uh, take one, draw off the ring, another copy of FOMO. Okay, so I can, <sighs> I can do a few different things here. I think I think probably the the best thing is for me to just get basic mountain. Basic Mountain cast a Kiki Jiki with the intention of trying to bait Flage on the Kiki Jiki next turn, and I could just jolt it away Kiki Jiki and cast FOMO and, and win the game after I copy Amtraptor to get extra energy. I died to like double tribal flames, I guess, but.
Novelist tokens. Boy, do I miss crime novelist. I will say these, like, Lonus Coco decks, they're always very hard to look at. I'm not sure. I'm not saying they're wrong. But they are uh, ugly. And I, I don't love... I guess the splash doesn't cost you that much. I do like the idea of image copying, like, your manufacturers and stuff. I don't exactly love the titles tracker. Kind of feel like the Urza should probably be regulated to like I would play the second court of calling over the uh over the sec the third court of calling over the second Urza. Okay, one tribal flames. A untap steam vents, dead to any other burn spell. Lightning bolts, womp womp. Bummer. So down a game against Domain Zoo. So our exercises can answer the ley lines, can answer the scions, the other ley lines. Uh, three Bin Charm can be a removal spell that can also hit a ley line. So we're going to bring those in as well. I I wonder if I should cut the raptors? They might be, might be kind of tough to hit. I do think this is a bad Kiki matchup. Yeah, I think we're just kind of pivoting more into like Boros control. I don't want to cut the Raptors. Let's try this. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think, yeah, I, I, I would be interested in playing probably like maybe zero cap, zero cap of Cannoneers. I don't love like a beat down card in what is like ultimately a combo deck. I think if you're, if you're going to play all these wall of roots, I would play four court of callings. Like this card is mostly here for court of calling. I think, um, I don't know that I would be on Ful Fulminator seems quite hard to cast. I don't really like it here. Zero endurance in the 75 is almost definitely wrong. All right, there's a ley line. Four answers to that. We'll be looking for it kind of aggressively here with the bobble, I guess. Uh, just going to fetch and surveil. We'll probably jolt it awake next turn on the bobble. Let's get rid of that. Delirium online on the heat so we could jolt it awake plus heat like Kavu next turn. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I've got really anything else. Okay, these Pyroclasms look very silly in your Delighted Halfling Gilded Goose Lonus deck. You cannot afford to play Pyroclasm. Um, yeah, that is, this, this is not a Pyroclasm deck. So now if our ring gets stubbed, we'll be able to jolt it awake it. Hopefully they play that in the cattle for my flage. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll go minus two cannoneer, um, minus one Urza, plus one wall of roots, plus two court of calling in the main deck, and then try that. And then I, I would build the cyborg very differently. I would not play any fulminators. I would not play any pyroclasms. I would probably play no red cyborg cards. And, uh, uh, um, this is the crazy pyroclasm deck. At least one endurance. Maybe a four endurance over these lanterns, though. Okay, so they have the Kavu, but I had to, I used the Jolted Awake on the Ragavan, or at least I felt that I had to use Jolted Awake on Ragavan. Um, so I think what I'll do is maybe try to get a little bit lucky on my Surveil. Okay, not quite. I don't want to play the... I don't want to play the uh, Blage into the Kavu Exile, so just play this. Pass. Uh, yeah, I think I would start there. Do you think the new Affinity List will survive a meta shift in terms of relevance, or do you think it's a very meta-dependent deck? I will say this. Uh, like, Can this survive the upcoming meta shift? It's like, you know, this isn't the weather channel. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> like, like how I don't can't tell you how the meta will shift. Uh, but I, I guess kind of simply put, Affinity is like somewhat viable right now because it's very good against Boros and Demir. These are the, the two most popular decks, it seems. If that dynamic changes, uh, then yes, it is. It is uh, likely that uh, it is likely that the ring will, uh, or sorry, the Affinity will be less good. I probably should have uh, second main phase this.
Nice. I guess we'll do this now. If we find Bobble, we could attack. Although it's a little bit worse against Binding, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, just like the other channel. But Aff Affinity in general is a pretty slow, fragile, and inconsistent deck is how I usually like to... How I, how I usually think of it is not... It is not a deck that I usually um, hold in particularly high regard. I do think it's good against Demir and Boros. Uh, Boros can also kind of choose to beat it if they want to. They can choose to play some sideboard cards for it. I didn't mean quite like that. I mean, the meta seems to be getting less Wrath Disguise, which is a bit more specific. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, of course, if there are less Wrath Disguise, Affinity will be better, right? Uh, and if there are more Wrath Disguise, Affinity will be worse. But I, I think I, I just kind of mostly recommend Affinity Gamers to enjoy uh, it while it lasts. Okay, let's draw. Maybe I'm going to go Flage plus Jolt to Awake to kill this. Um, does the Raven Charm change anything? I guess I could go... No, sorry, I can't. Okay, I could go FOMO, discard Flage, Jolted Awake Flage, kill a Nakadal, and then Thraben Charm the Kavu with that on the stack. I don't have an answer, another answer for Leyline in my hand, but this seems like, okay. It's a fun line at the very least. Don't love drawing another land. Thank you, Channeler. Kill Leyline Flage Kavu. Well, I can't... The Kavu is 5 toughness, so... I think this is probably going to be my line. That's not the right mode. Um... Keeping this on top is kind of better against Graveyard Hate. It's like kind of an okay card to have, too. I'm going to keep it a little bit. A little bit unsure about that one. Okay, then I could trade Chandler for Nakato too, maybe. Is Goryeo still alive? Yeah, Goryeo is still, I think, a pretty underrated deck, even. So then it's Giganta, three mystery cards. Also fun, Jolted Awake is just sometimes Lightning, <laughs> light, light, lightning Helix, sometimes Tune the Narrative, sometimes Trash for Treasure, sometimes Goryeo's Vengeance, sometimes just Cycles for two mana. They have three lands, right? If you oh oh kill the kill the ley line to turn the Nakato into a three three. I see. I see. I do get hit for three more damage this turn with that line. I'll say this too: if if Dredge is somehow able to make this big comeback, <laughs> Gora's is probably not that bad. Okay, they flames me down to eight. I'm going down to six. They bolt me down to five. Okay, do you just have another bolt? I'm gonna be. <laughs> Bummed. I'm going to draw three cards here. Hopefully we find an Arena of Glory. We don't find an Arena of Glory. Nor another ring. Nor a Kiki-Jiki. So it seems like I should jolt it awake. Helix them. We had arena. We have, we have three arena of glories, but if we had one here, we would be able to uh, get an extra FOMO trigger off the flage, which is pretty cool. Then go up to nine, then down to six. We're not dead to another flame, so we should be should likely be pretty alive here. Oh, XL one, two, three, four, five. Oh right, I did sideboard out all the kikis. Right, sorry, that was like minutes ago. Yeah, Dredge was like so popular like yesterday. It was kind of surprising. I hit them for four at the FOMO. They're down to nine. I'm at nine. I'm basically at six, though. I saw Jolts Awake. I thought you were playing Blue White Oculus plus Mentor, like the standard deck, kind of. I mean, you could we could possibly do that, but. Um. Like, one thing is, I think you really want to be in red for, like, Discharge, too. It could be Jeskai, maybe. Yeah, Kiki plus FOMO is infinite. Uh, 
rummages and attacks. Well, it's it's not actually infinite. It's I guess it is bound by the number of cards in your library. Is Creeping Chill still my least favorite card of all time? Um, I don't think I've really uh, harbored that much hate for it recently. There's, I'm sure there are other cards I dislike more. I don't know. I don't know that there's really much in modern that I like. Like right right now, I don't feel like I have like a nemesis card that I'm like, oh, I cannot believe they played this. You know, it's pretty often for like you know magic players and me to have cards like that. But I just I don't know what that what that would be for me right now. Uh oh, I don't have a I don't have a bolt. Discharge, discharge, discharge. Yes. Okay, now I could just have. Turn two ring potentially. What's my most dislike card? Is it Murktide? Dude, I love Murktide. I'm Murktide is my favorite card to be popular in modern. It is just like, oh, Murktide's popular. I guess I'm getting to win a lot of matches today. Is usually how I feel. <laughs> Why would it be Murktide? <laughs> okay, uh, we have some bad hits, mostly on Holy Heat, but. Oh, Jolted Awake also bad. No, uh... No Bobble. I do still get to get the extra energy here, which is kind of fun. Okay, so they hit me for 5 down to 12. Big draw step. Okay, so here I was hoping that uh, my opponent would block, and then I could discard the Flage and then Jolt it Awake it. I'm just going to Jolt it Awake the Scalding Tar now. The Kavu's got Trample too, it might just die here. I think we have to block. Not only does this block keep my life total higher. No, I'm not I guess I'm still that really dead to flames because I have to crack this fetch. But I'm not dead to one bolt. I am dead to two bolts, okay. Oh one one. I'm a I'm a big giganta hater. I think we're gonna surveil turn one. That's what I'm old of six. Is FOMO the only discard outlet? Yeah, I had some builds that were playing more. But it's it's like kind of okay. Like Kiki Jiggy's five mana. It's not like we just always need to reanimate it. Is hitting Jagatha meme? No, I, I genuinely despise Jagatha. It is just very dumb that like, oh, Boros and Domain Zoo gets a free 5-5 five five and they get to play Arena of Glory sometimes for like almost no deck building decisions. They just get it. And uh, and it's, and you will just lose the game because this card is just very poorly designed. That the the meeting the requirements of Chikanta is just way too low. It is just a, a very a very dumb card. I <laughs> I'm so tired of Gigantha. I'm tired of brewing and then like having to perform a Gigantha check every single time because it just is free so often. Um, I I have I have won too many games because of my free Gigantha and lost too many games against opposing free Giganthas. Okay, very interesting that they're bobbling after cracking their fetch here. How the combo works? If you Kiki copy FOMO, you can untap your Kiki with your FOMO. Put that in the graveyard. I may be able to jolt it awake. I need a little bit more energy. If I draw a discharge, I'll probably just go discharge, not pay anything. Jolted awake. Probably begins to hollow one here, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Also, like Gigantha is like way better in Boros than it is in like every other deck. Like you get you get to haste it. Yeah, you get to jump it with their gu guide of souls. It's like, ugh. yeah. Thank you, Avon. It was a good suggestion. So not hollow one, I guess just Jund. So dead channeler. We get to flage the goif and then maybe also flage the the Ren and six.
just do this now then we'll figure out the rest later yeah i could i consider fable fable is quite bad but i understand i understand wanting fable in your fomo jolted awake deck if you could jolt awake your fable back i'd be pretty into it but F fable has been it, it, it has not been a card that's been like performing for me i don't know if it's been, been performing for y'all but i have not been that into it okay a lot of good top decks here So I'm going to Jolted Awake the Channeler and then Flage the Renin Six. Which does grow the Goyf, but I gain three life. Now Aether Hub lets me get back the ring, too. And then I'm also, uh, if they kill my Channeler, or I guess if I maybe chump like an Arena of Gloria Flage. It's better when you're trying to grind. Okay, Fable is not better when you're trying to grind chat. The two grindy decks in, Bo in Modern are Demir Oculus and Boros. Fable is bad in both these matchups. So it's it's like, like Fable is no longer the grindy card. It's like a card selection enabler. Esther, where are you? Yeah, I know, I know. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> like, like, there's a reason Boros cut all their Fables for rings. It's just like... Fable's just bad in the matchup. Ring is good in the matchup. Yeah, Spyro might be better. I, I was thinking about that. All right, they just go to Meyer. I'm at 16. Chump Lucky was kind of an interesting thought here. FOMO. Okay, I don't think I want to haste. Would not hate drawing an Aether Hub here. Second Jolted Awake. All right, let's attack. Uh, at this point, I'm probably going to jolt, just Jolted Awake um, a Flage to kill the FOMO. But if they trade Channelers, then I'll go get back Channeler, get back Ring or Flage. Kikijiki is an infinite combo with FOMO. I guess we could also choose to... Oh, wait. Did I just... Oh, I think I just punted. I I, I just missed lethal. Although, they can have a removal spell really easily here. But yeah, sorry. I, I could have just dolted awake, not spent any energy, then get back Kiki, and then go infinite with the FOMO. But I, I, I don't know if that's good, because they just have two cards and one mana up. So... And, like, I'm going to be able to arena Glory Flage next turn, which seems pretty nice. Can't believe Vegas is next week. I know. I'm I'm excited. I need to do some sealed prep. Drave with the 32. Thank you so much. Yeah, I also get to like untap Flage with the FOMO potentially. So I think I think this is the better line. But yeah, we could have we could have technically gone for a lethal there. I don't want to live in a world where Fable is no longer for the grindy matchup. So you gotta evolve, I guess. Yeah, it's not exactly infinite because you're drawing your whole time. So it doesn't, it doesn't beat infinite life. Is unstable aim just outclassed by ring? Uh, it's It kind of seems that way. I mean, like, ring is better at the mirror. I remember there was a time where I felt like unstable amulet was better than the ring in Bora. Specifically, this was, like, largely for, like, amped raptor considerations. But it just kind of is okay to have some bricks on raptor to have things be more powerful overall. Amulet is a pretty good card, though. I, I don't know. I, it's not a card I, I I hate. I'm somewhat surprised you're not playing Guide for more energy generation. Uh, Yeah, I mean, the thing with Guide... Let me know what you would cut for Guide of Souls. It's it's also very... Oh, they're playing the... The Flytrap. Nice. Yeah, let me know what you would cut for the Guide of Souls if you if you would if you would include it. Um, But it's for me, it was a very tough include. All right, this is 11. I'm going down to 8. I think that's fine because I just want to untap my Flage with my FOMO. So I'm going to lose Delirium on the channel, which is kind of okay, so I can just chump block the, the Goyf anyways. Do you think the Green Overlord is playable? I kind of liked it in my Devotion build we had the other day. Oh, sorry, we do lose Delirium. Which is, um, okay. I guess I... 
Yeah, I don't actually have lethal. Do they have a heat? Heat would be so bad. Yeah, one damage short, so we'll just kill the fly trap and then uh, leave this stuff back. It would definitely be more all in on the combo, less interactive, but I probably cut heat for the guy. Okay, I mean, I mean, that's that's what, we only have three heats anyways, but. That is pretty close. I a guide is kind of interesting. I like guide is guide is worse without Ocelot Pride in the deck. This is um this is one dynamic to consider. It just isn't as good in here as you would maybe be used to it being without without pride. I don't think there's room for guide and pride. Guide is also like very fragile, but um I you can play it. You could definitely play it. It is a good card. I'll cut DRC for salvaging and unholy heat for solar transformer. Transformer's kind of dope. Um, okay, let's block. Remember that if we jolted awake or FOMO, we don't have to discard a card. Although, if I draw a fetch, I might just exile it and escape the flage. Although, I thought they had no cards in their hand. So I hit, they hit a, I hit a ring. If I cast Jolted Awake and not spent energy first, I guess we could have got it back. Obviously not very realistic. Um, so now we're going to plan to Chump Chump and we have the haste, hasty Arena Flage coming. Um, so they, they have to attack with this Channeler. So what they should do is just not attack with one of these two. In their second main phase, they're trying to tap three mana to escape another Goyf, staying at eight nine two. Well, my escaped flage is not getting the job done at this point, so I guess I'm ring fishing. Those are some uh, big Goyf, some. Okay, so we have some exercises to exile. Oh, sorry, Thraven Charms to exile their graveyards. Exercise can also kill their big stuff. We'll bring in Chain to the Rocks. Seeing that they're on Fatal Push makes me kind of like the Kiki plan. I think I'm going to trim at least one. We could have just Jolt the Ring last year. If you Jolt the Ring, you don't get protection. Why didn't you double haste? Well, I wouldn't have had Delirium on the Flage anymore, so double. I, I don't. Double haste isn't a winning line, is it? I don't think it is. I'm just ring fishing there almost, almost exclusively. Let's maybe not play the surgical. I don't know about the exercises either. Could be okay. Yeah, I'll try the same plan of just pivoting out of the Kiki combo, I guess. It's kind of tough against the tar fire deck. Okay, opponents on the mold of six. Value. DRC is kind of off plan for control us combo deck. Transform gives you access to turn three ring and turn four key guard, I guess. I, 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 can, I can actually not put, believe uh, building this deck without four DRCs. I, I, dis I disagree that it's off plan. Not sure what we're discarding here. I think I think I have to play the FOMO and dig for lands. Um let's discard the three of insurance. We get a lot of removal. And then I, I think I think to say DRC doesn't blog in a combo control deck is just really off. It like it just fills your graveyard so quickly, it gives you a lot of card selection, it gives you good plan B's. It's very good to Jolted Awake, very good with Jolted Awake, very just like and it kind of an insane card to not include. Okay, this now because of Bowmaster. We've seen Assassin's Trophy. A card that uh, only a mother could love. There's an arena of glory. Can maybe just haste both of these next turn. It would be nice to be able to like uh discharge something and have a bit of a higher energy count for when we go for the Amtraptor.
So they play a FOMO, discard another FOMO. Yeah, but I think I think I'm gonna not haste here and then go Chandler change the rocks. Hoping to get delirium with with the um there we go. With the hope of being able to discharge on my opponent's turn so that I can set up for an arena of glory flage. Super Chef Bobby Flay, thank you for the four months. Appreciate ya. Cauldron would be good here, specifically for Graveyard Hitting Cobble Enabling. I had a more cauldron-focused build, and I ended up cutting basically all the cauldrons for all the Jolted Awakes. There was just not much you could do with cauldron beyond just... Um, yeah, ca Cauldron ended up just not doing much besides like being good with Kiki Jiki, and like Jolted Awake isn't always good with Kiki Jiki, but it's just more versatile overall and doing a similar thing. Bomo with Winona. Winona's just so slow. I have not cut around to more Yigra. I'm probably going to take the week off Yigras because we did so much recently. But uh, I do, I do, I, I think next time I play it, I will try the Asmo Shell. I just keep seeing you run out of cards, not finding the second half of your combo, or drawing Jolts Awake with nothing to remain. It could be good because it's birth match two. Wonder if Hinge could be good. I don't know. Maybe I, I think I think let me cook with peace and love. It is it's match two. We we got we've been I think pretty flooded in half of our games. Yeah. Well, my opponent. Holding the man up. I'm just going to surveil. I'm just going to discharge as an energy ritual. It would like let my raptor cast uh, anything to him. I want to be able to haste this uh, flage. Yeah, let's go for the haste flage this turn. We may not be able to double um, two drop next turn because of the exerted arena of glory. I'm going to leave just the FOMO in the yard since it's two types for DRC. Like we have another FOMO in the hand. What do you think about staying more traditional Boros? It replaced the top end with Kiki and some number of Jolted Awake. I, 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 what I think is I spent a long time working on this build. I'm pretty happy with it at the moment, and um, uh, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I like like usual. I spend I spend hours working on this list last night. I have a lot of I have a lot of reasons for every card choice and. You, usually when I have a new direction for a brew, a new angle or whatever, and the chat suggestion is, what if we go a more traditional route and just barely change anything is, is something I'm not very interested in because I'm, I'm trying to push the envelope. I'm trying to um, work on decks in unique and interesting ways that other people aren't trying. That is like kind of the, the entire thing I like to do here is get weird with it. All right, let's Raptor first. But I, I think I think we are entering the please let me cook phase of the stream. All right, so we hit a ring off of a raptor. I'm going to, I think, jolted awake my blaze and killed their channeler. To kill the raptor just helps me fuel the fuel the flage. Pick up the wooded foothills instead. They still have that assassin's trophy. That was assassin's trophy, not this decay, right? Yeah, it was assassin's trophy. They they tar fire targeting Rin and Six. Think that's uh, is this a concession or? Oh no, it's on purpose so that they don't kill my raptor for flage. I don't know if that's correct. They also didn't haste the fly trap. I do have ring protection. I guess that make I guess that's gonna be correct then. The last card is an assassin's trophy. Uh, Kiki and FOMO is effectively infinite. It isn't truly infinite because you deck yourself, but you attack with FOMO, untap the Kiki, copy FOMO again. Okay. Um so that's six mana. So we go Channeler, Heat the Fly Trap, Graveyard anything, and then I guess. So I guess I, 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 sh I now I'm exerting both arenas here, but they're, they're they are deterministically dead, so we don't need to sweat this too much. 
the one ring at Ratted Win. Win. What 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 do you think we? I haven't heard anybody suggest eradicating the ring. What do you think we should errata it to? What and also what other cards would you like to power level errata? <laughs> Is it only the ring, and then never power level errata anything else? Let's get weird with it. Let's just have alchemy, Magic's most popular format for modern. Right, going to game three. Let's run it back. Can Jolt Awake be used in a value pile with a Maria brought back a Null Drifter? Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, Null Drifter is a very good card to Jolt Awake. Just like a kind of high on the energy count. Wizards did just print physical alchemy cards. This Net Watch can accept. Yeah, of course. I just wish they banned the ring already and nerf Boris Energy hitting one card from it. Other than that, modern would be perfect. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree that the ring is getting more and more problematic. I I, uh, I I am starting to support a ring ban. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting pretty close. But what I what I really wish is that we um like if we're gonna have these scheduled BNR announcements uh in in December or whatever, this is two months away. It's kind of a lifetime. With like the last announcement, Wizards just seems to be so committed to not not banning things out of this scheduled announcement. And so to have the same conversation about banning the ring over and over and over again, instead of just trying to brew and innovate and like work, work on the format is it's just, it's just not something I'm that interested in talking about as someone who's here, you know, you know, streaming a full time, the, the takes about the ring get very tired, very re repetitive, very uninteresting to me. And so I, I would just really like to see, um, I would really like to see us just kind of focus on what we can control, focus on the current format, focus on brewing in the format, focus on getting better, focusing on metagaming. And then t towards the BNR times, I think is when we can start to have more of a conversation about bans and stuff. But th this, you know, it is just, it's just been too repetitive. The ring is not 50%. Again, I, this is what I'm saying. I, I know I, the ring is problematic. <laughs> the ring is, I think become a lot more problematic now that Boros has adopted it. Um, I, I think it's also very problematic in the in the uh, labyrinth decks. What I'm what I'm saying is, I just it's just not something I want to talk about all stream every stream, and it I, I've been saying this for a long time. And the the ring haters just that's all they want to talk about. It seems. Hopefully, this is not a surgical. Damn it! I'm saying Flage is an issue too. Flage is not Flage is not close to being a bannable card. Uh, uh, Flage, Flage, Flage is like a worse card than Guide Pride to Johnny Raptor, in my opinion. It is like Flage is super fine. It is very bad in a lot of matchups. Um, <laughs> it is is like your worst card in a lot of matchups. I uh, um, it gets surgical. <laughs> Look, we're seeing here. I am just not like I don't know. But but also but but like but listen to me. I don't want to talk about bands. <laughs> I'm saying please don't talk about bands. <laughs> I want to talk about bands closer to schedule B in our time. That's like that like if this is what Wizards is making us do, never ever banning things out of schedule. Just please, please <laughs> listen to me when I say I don't want to talk about bands or <laughs> all stream every stream. What are my thoughts on Hinge? Curious if Kaza finds Kiki. Well, it's it's a white source in your Kiki, Jack. It's kind of tough. Um, and then I think Arena is a bit more important, but you could play some number. Okay, so I'm going to discharge this because I want to get my hand empty so I can jolt it awake FOMO for some value. You can always not talk about bands. Well, I, I want to not talk about it, but like when the chat is full of talk questions about it and then I go, can we not talk about it? Can we not talk about it? Not talk about it. I'm saying, please stop commenting about <laughs> the vans. That is maybe you have to read between the lines a tiny bit, but that is, that is what I'm saying to y'all is please stop asking about the bands. All right. So we get to FOMO into Raptor here. Although we get, it's kind of tough to Raptor in the spot. Um, because if we hit a removal spell, it's pretty bad. But I think we should probably just slam it. I'm trying. I'm. I'm trying to moderate the chat. 
Okay, so they have three cards in their hand. We're very ahead on board. We have no flages left. Uh, they heat a raptor because they somehow don't have delirium. It's kind of surprising. They do have two nether goifs in the yard. They have their third land. Only three types, so they can't escape another goif. Molten Collapse, a FOMO, one card in their hand. I hate this channeler. Their opponent all the way down to 11, probably getting surveilled. Down, oh, no surveil in the turn. Is this us not playing surveil lands? I don't, I don't think we've seen one. Not playing surveil lands in your delirium deck is pretty big miss, probably. Red and six, probably ping the raptor, then die to the channeler. Great top deck. Do you feel like there's a shell outside of Boros to use Amtraptor? There's um the Glimpse of Tomorrow build that we had. I, I thought that deck was pretty good. The like Raptor Marauder Glimpse deck. Could be okay maybe to ignore the Ren and Six. I'm a little bit worried about them double two dropping next turn though. Okay, there is a Surveil Land. Shinka Bloodstone Keep to have Deer Seas with the Mirror. Well, we'd have to make this legendary first. Which we could do with um, a 4 mana enchantment aura from Dominaria. This card is the Powerful Assassin's Trophy. GG. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and haste my FOMO before I tap the ring, because you want to cast FOMO with no cards in your hand if possible. So we can haste a channel or two, which we'll do instead of playing a ring. So unless they have a removal spell, they're going down to one life here. Which is not that high of a life total. I like with DRC and FOMO, you can't misclick on the <laughs> on the attack. You have to attack. I get that Assassin's Trophy is bad, but it's probably not that bad with the Eldrazi variants around. I mean, I think it's probably not awful in that matchup, but it, I think it's bad against Demir and it's bad against Boros, which are the two most popular decks, but... So, like, them boarding it in against me is, I think, not correct. It's also, like, just not one of the better sideboard cards you could play for those matchups. So, like, you know what I mean? It's, like, there there are better sideboard cards for those matchups. And it's not good against, like, these other decks, I think. We're on the play against a Gigant. I'm going to mulligan this five land Kiki hand. Obviously don't love this one. But I think we have to keep it on the play and hope to surveil into a land. Yeah, reiterating bolt. I should probably take a jolted away. Is there a good creature modern vigilance some minor synergy with FOMO? Um Yeah, I can't really think of any good vigilant cards off the top of my head, I guess. Okay, so we'll discard the ring, and if we can draw a white source, we can Jolted Awake Raptor, then Jolted Awake Ring. So I've drawn the third Jolted Awake, which is kind of funny. <laughs> My opponent says, oh, dot. Now I've got Delirium, too. Yeah, y'all awake? Opponent's surveilling. That's a, I haven't seen a white source yet. They probably are Mardu, though. Another non-white source. I'm going to bring back the Raptor, though, so we can set up for Jolted on the Ring for next turn. Maybe we can do a nice double spell, too. Oh, sorry. This was uh, a big punt, though. I, for I forgot that we'd lose Delirium if I Jolt Awake first. My opponent thoughts is, again, I guess we cycle and try to hit a land. But minus two damage here. Oh, they're Jund again. Wait, is this just, like... Is this the, the Jund Delirium deck again? 
I guess I'm kind of glad this archetype is picking up again. It's it's like a little bit weird. We were putting a lot of work in on it. Like, I don't understand because like, like it was like a month ago. Like I, I had like the earlier builds of this deck, and it, it just kind of feels like I I wouldn't run into it at all. And then like what happened? Do make plays an RC key with it, and then because. <laughs> <laughs> now people play it online? I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe maybe people just really like the Thoughtseize build more than the Say It's Name build, which might be correct. I'm going to keep another one, the fourth one. Yeah, I guess I have to play more RCQs. Dak posted a gen list like yesterday. Yeah, maybe it was Dak's build. It didn't seem like anyone wanted to play it when I was playing. Okay, so we can Jolted Awake that next turn. Yeah, the, the Wraith seems kind of nice. Uh, I do want to kind of circle back to uh, the Shell. Like, with like Wraiths over say its name and maybe some thoughts he's like, like I, I like Doom's take on the deck. I don't know. I do think it's cool that people are like more of a believer in it now. They flip a catacombs off the NT. I guess I'm playing maybe a little bit too much into Thought Seize. I was just thinking that I tapped out a Bowmaster, but I should have probably tapped the ring because of Bowmaster earlier. Yeah, I agree that fair matchups are pretty good and combos bad. I, I just don't know if like 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 are adding four Thought Seize gonna help combo a ton? Like, should you just try to be faster in those matchups? I don't know. Maybe 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 it is a good direction to go. Just not not sure. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to go discharge the NT, then jolt to wake the FOMO before I draw. This way I can uh, be plus one card off my FOMO. Didn't ring protect you from thoughts. He's that turn. Oh, right, though. So I guess don't listen to me for anything. All right. Let's kill the FOMO. Get in for two. Hard to beat a deck like store without thoughtsies, especially if we're there on a Ruben Medallion draw. I mean, that's true, but like with thoughtsies, it's kind of weird because it oftentimes feels like you're in, in, in this kind of shell specifically. It feels like you're taking a turn off the thoughtsies most of the time. Like it takes a turn off of your clock. And then, um, oh, we have the combo. Um, it takes a turn off of your clock to, to thought sees a lot of the time. And it basically buys you one extra turn. And this, this is maybe a little bit reductive, but I, I, I against Ruby storm, I have a hard time that a singular thought sees is going to buy you more than one turn. And so I just don't, I just don't know how helpful it is, but it's, it's, you know, I, I, I am open to playing thought sees in the show. Something like Flute, hits Belcher, Cascade, Storm kind of. I mean, it's not very good against Storm, but it, I, I do like that it's good against the Belcher specifically. Might actually be better too. Haste two channelers here. Let's go for this though. Gar Elf with the five months. Thank you. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. So I'll untap the Kiki and Raptor. They do have the Tarfire. But they're gonna they are going to one also. Maybe I could lose to like a hasty flytrap though. Oh, then they mess up on their block, because now they have to now they have to chump this Raptor. So that's good news for me. Um, they have the Detectives Phoenix in the yard, so I don't think I'm playing around Flytrap by not attacking either. No Flytrap in hand, so it'd have to be one of the last two cards. I 
Yeah, yeah, FOMO is when this thing attacks for the first time, not on your first combat phase. So if you make a new FOMO with Geeky, you get to go off again. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, I think I think for like um for the Delirium deck, I was just kind of playing I'm gonna play four damping sphere on my sideboard and kind of call it a day against Storm. I think that's kind of probably about as good as it's gonna get. Oh yeah, yeah, they have Gigantha Mist Gigantha Meyer mystery card, right? Rough tumble over Pyroclasm for evidence. I think I'd be open for that, yeah. Non-flyers matters if you're trying to, like, tar fire plus Pyroclasm a Guide of Soul sometimes. It does come up. I think the Boros matchup is probably just pretty good in general. Did the combo with the good done already? Yeah, I think so too. So we win. We know the last card is just a Mire. Gonna haste some channelers. So up a game against our second Jun Delirium opponent. I'm gonna bring in these. Yeah, I think we're just sideboarding the same way. Play the surgical though. Try this. I think I'm convinced on channel. Yeah, channelers just so so busted. Very, very strong. It's kind of like the only one drop that got like a lot better post MH3 and uh, of like the really good one drops pre MH3. It's like the only, it just feels like a lot of times even better than Guide and Pride. Not all the time, of course. Let's give this one a go. Spike it thinks the ring is becoming problematic and could be banned owing to how you get smarter. He does not support an errata or restricting on ring a solution next period on DCD. He'll discuss ban no bans at that time. Or I would probably say close to that time. But yeah, I just I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it because I like like the, the way the way Wizards is structuring things, it's just like like they're it just it's just such a waste of time to be rambling about it for months because they're they're not gonna emergency ban anything. But like, like if we're like three weeks out, two weeks out, we could start to like talk about what we think should happen. It is also like the ring is real. Like when you go turn two ring in your labyrinth decks, it is like really, really crazy. So they keep the malevolent rumble. We obviously need to find a land. We have a few chances of doing that, thankfully. These are both my bob. Oh, sorry. Is one of these is my bobble. We do find the land. It is an aether hub, though. Should make a short out of the one time where you bobbled the opponent, saw they had lethal on top, and then shuffled away. I don't know if I have that clip. That was a pretty good moment. I meant I had I had so I had been stockpiling some shorts for when I was in Austin. I was gonna upload them all then, but then I got very busy, so I got I have some uh, some on the backlog. So I will have delirium after I crack my my fetch here. Isn't labyrinth the problem there? Not the ring. No, I like I mean, I, so like we're talking about the one ring, even though I don't want to talk about that much, but. Just, just to, I guess, clarify this point or whatever. Um, like the the thing is, like the like the ring got much better because of Ugin's Labyrinth. Like the like you you didn't used to just be able to cast it turn two in your colorless decks, and the fact that now you can is a big part of what's like making it problematic, in my opinion. Okay, I'm going to get basic mountain. I'm going to attack for three. And then what I'm planning on doing is heating my opponent's channeler at some point. And so like, so if, it, if it's at this point, I'm just going to do it in response here. And um, if it wasn't at this point, what I probably would have done would have been to um, heat the spell bomb. Then I just Thraben Charm Exile their graveyard so the channeler dies. That was the plan. But the fact that they just did this now... Makes things a lot a lot simpler. I can just I can just heat the channeler now. FOMO discard flage. Pass the turn. I 
And then also Ugin's Labyrinth would be much, much, much worse without the ring. Okay, so they put a fly trap into their hand. Then they cast an Inti. So I think what we'll do is surveil, discharge the Inti, and then leave up a three even charm to exile their graveyard. I'm gonna also graveyard this so we get delirium and fill the yard for Flacia more. Uh, I think I'm graveyarding that. It would be probably okay to keep. Let's just fill up the yard for Flage. Elves no longer good in this Furious world. Well, Fury is gone, but Pyroclasm is like one of the most popular cards in modern. Uh, or it's very popular. Can you redeem a deck tech? You got the channel points, you can redeem a deck tech. Oh, Elish, not Elves. Uh, Elish is... Elish Norn is okay, I probably. does get discharged pretty <laughs> more, more often than you would want it to. You probably can't play very many, and it doesn't really go in a deck very clearly. I can also just kill the Fly Trap. I don't like that that loses to Fatal Push, so I'm going to exile their graveyard instead. Keep that one, maybe. Oh, sorry. I should have, probably should have graveyarded. Okay, two and one. Let's keep. If our first Amped Raptor isn't good, the second one will be. Do you think Jundelirium deck is a better option than Hollow One, or are they just two different decks? Um, so if I'm going to be quite honest about the Jundelirium archetype, uh, a month ago, I you know I built the Jundelirium deck, and I thought it was pretty good, um, and I think it is like a solid option. I'm working a lot on Hollow One with the new cards, and then... At the moment, I think that the Flage build of Hollow One is better than Jundelirium. I think it's better than the stock Hollow One lists. Um, I think Flage is insane in Hollow One, and it's it's doing a very similar thing to the uh, other Hollow One builds, but just like, I, I think instead of having a Flytrap as your Arena of Glory card, I think Flage is a better Arena of Glory card. I think Flytrap is pretty good, and there's like some there's some nice stuff going on there. But overall, I would just rather like be able to loot away Flage and like have that inevitability and also be better in the Boros matchup, which is obviously pretty relevant. And so maybe maybe Magic Online will catch up in a month because <laughs> uh, it seems to, people are just now getting on the uh, Jun Delirium train. Okay, so I'm glad this is not Belcher. Well, because I ran into... I mean, I think that the, the Boros build of the, the Hollow One deck needs to have some answers for... Um, it needs to have some answers for Leyline of the Guild Pact on the board, because that's what we lost to in the challenge. We played it. Kind of said there's no room for Fable here. Fable here. Extra combo threats. Yeah, I agree. I, I wanted to play Fable. I thought I thought we would play Fable when I was first working on this list. But also, it's like Fable's not that good anymore. It's always been like Fable's always been this card that's like kind of been like a pretty good modern card instead of a crazy modern card, if that makes sense. And there has I think there's always been like some degree of of like people overvaluating over overrating fable in modern where it's been like a really crazy card and standard and pioneer. And they kind of have this, these feelings about the, about the, <laughs> um, the card in modern because they have like, it's so crazy. It was so crazy and standard and pioneer, but it's always just kind of been like a pretty good modern card. You know what I mean? And, um, then they printed a lot of better grindy cards, and they printed a lot of cards like Frog and Oculus that just line up really well against Fable, and Fable is just no longer that good in the grindy matchups. How have the Raptors felt? Uh, they've been they've been very good, I think. I, they they do brick sometimes, but like it's kind of like a trade off where they they brick more often, but they also hit crazy stuff more often. You're basically saying it's not a Modern Horizons card. Um, I mean, if you if you really just want to fume about Modern Horizons, you can 
that's how you could interpret my comment, sure. So let's keep the heat here. You are free to fume about Modern Horizons, as always. Encouraged, even. So probably surveilling here. Would not be too surprised if this Oculus got unearthed. Keeps the card on top. There it is. So it'd be great to just get Delirium and then play Ring plus Heat. All right. Ding, ding, ding. Too bad I couldn't heat end of turn. Um, let me heat first. I might, I think I might just escape this flage though. To play around spell pierce. Yeah, let's do that. I do lose delirium, but I can get it back kind of quick because I have a FOMO in the yard. Yeah, I can just get it back as soon as I crack my Arid Mesa. Okay, so on to game two against Demir. I'm gonna bring in a chain to the rocks. I think I'm I think I might want the first surgical. Now one thing I was thinking about this deck too is Kiki Jiki is actually kind of sick because they just almost can't kill it. They have like one removal spell. They have they have counter magic too, but um it's not as bad in this matchup as you would think, because they're just all in on the their fatal pushes. Play exercises too, but I think we have enough removal for um, they're creatures. We have eight good removal spells now. Heat is very good at the moment, too. Did we ever find out if that hit would have counted on Dark Souls run? So we, we, some, someone, I can't remember who it was, they asked Dino about it, and he said he was very confused and had never seen anything like it. So, um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> there was like a lot of weirdness on that on the on. The, so if you missed it, we did do a Dark Souls no hit attempt last uh, Thursday, and um, there's I don't know if there's a clip. But there was a, a very weird hit where we like homeward boned away, and then we got attacked by a lizard, and there wasn't that there was a sound of a hit, but we our health bar didn't go down, and we didn't get staggered, and so I don't know if it was an audio glitch and. And like the technical definition of a hit is taking damage or having your character staggered. And neither of those two things happened, but there was the audio cue. So it was very weird. We just kept going. Um, and then we had an enemy kind of glitch through a wall by doing an attack, a wall that he wasn't supposed to be able to walk through or sorry, a door he wasn't supposed to be able to walk through. And we got hit there in, in Orlando. And so that was also a very rare situation. I guess I have to watch out for that. Because if they, if they they can they're not that guy was not supposed to be able to get through that that door but if he doesn't attack animation at the door he can like squeeze through it and uh, <laughs> that's no bueno. I'm gonna go ahead and surveil here. Heat is not gonna be able to kill a frog anyways. Thingamabobby with the 18 months. Thank you so much. Hope that you're doing well today. Yeah, but it, it is very fun. To, uh, it is very fun to like. <laughs> <laughs> for 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 Dino to be confused about a hit, <laughs> so let's maybe discharge as a discard two make three energy. Didn't expect Kiki in modern. Yeah, Kiki's a lot better with Jolted Awake and FOMO. I want to play Dark Souls one again. I'm playing to play on stream soon. Out of curiosity, we'll see. So, so I, I I do think I'm practiced enough to where we can do like real no hit attempts on stream again. But I just took a kind of a weekend trip and um. I haven't practiced in like five days. So I think, I think be before we play Dark Souls in the stream again, I just want to do like one more like 
practice session off stream where I, I do I do a whole run and then I use the save states too um, to practice all the moments. And so I would like I would like to do another one this week and get uh, get the three <laughs> charity sponsored streams done uh, as soon as we can. I could also be make maybe make them discard too. I'm just gonna do zero energy and then chain here. They have a force negation. It's kind of bad. They do pitching another copy of Harbinger of the Seas. That being said, next turn I can go FOMO discard a Flage, have Delirium heat the Frog. Uh, they could I guess discard their whole hand. We also have the three extra energy, which is pretty good. But yes, yeah, so you, you we'll, we'll uh, ho hopefully we do one more Dark Souls stream this week. That would be that would be pretty cool. Do they have a third Harbinger? Looks like they do. It could be a Murktide. Okay, it is a Murktide. Five five. What's the bigger problem, the Murktide or the Frog? I think I think it's the Murktide because I can just like chump the Frog maybe with the FOMO. Or I guess I could just like let it hit me too. Okay, now I, have, now I have a second heat. Yeah, I think with second heat, I just kill the frog. Any tar fire? Any tar fire enjoyers in the chat? Do we have any tar fire fans? Tar, tar fire has been like would have been so bad this whole league against this gauntlet of Domain Zoo, Jundelirium, Jund Jundelirium Demir. <laughs> that was our gauntlet. Okay, so we can haste to flage. I don't want to haste to flage this turn, I think. Um, because then I remove my delirium for unholy heat. Yeah, I, I like Tarfire in general. I think Tarfire is very good at the Jun Delirium shell, but in this shell I think you have to play Discharging Heat instead. Just teasing, y'all. I'm gonna play the ring this turn. Maybe it gets countered, I go to six, but then we get to go heat the Murktide and escape a Flage. Tap on upkeep because of Bowmaster. Hasting Flage plus Fulmo. It's like, well, we wouldn't have had enough cards in the yard for Delirium. And if they have a counter spell here, like I, I'm more interested in Flage resolving. So I, I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm playing around counter magic by baiting counter spell with the ring here. All right. So after losing round one to a, a close one to Domain Zoo, let's get a 4-1 prediction going. Another Demir opponent. So I guess I guess there's some tech for y'all. Um, I, I like to do this a lot of the time too. Like when I get when I get very stuck, like I I, I feel very stuck on uh, Arena of Glory Goblin Engineer. I like to be like, all right, y'all have any <laughs> any fun shells? But I spent so long. It's it's always like this is always like the hardest part about my process is like I just spent five hours and and my mining mining for content and the content mines run dry. They thought Sky were me. It's funny. They're not shuffling. The Jolted Awake is pretty good. I think I kind of just need to go discharge the frog and then I can untap Raptor with five energy in my pool. You can combo with a few things. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, obviously we're looking at Cauldron. We're looking at, I'm looking at Clock of Omens a little bit. I'm looking at Manufactor. I'm looking at Trash for Treasure. But nothing is looking that good. I'm looking at, like, the old Magda shells. The the Ruby Storm builds with Flame of an Ore. Uh, I, think, I think that they're interesting. I, um... I kind of like how main deckable the flame of Anors are, and I like I, it. Does seem like it hits almost everything. There are not that many, or I guess I should say, if you just don't think people are going to play Deafening Silence or High Noon, they're going to be pretty good. Okay, there's a turn two Kiki Jiki. So next turn we can combo kill if they somehow can't if they don't have a push or counter spell for my FOMO, which isn't very likely, right? I was going to copy this instep, get some energy. 
Very fun to cast Kiki on turn two. I, I don't know if our opponent was exactly expecting this one, huh? Do you hold the opinion Jolt's Awake should basically always pick play with Bobble? Yeah, Jol Jolt's Awake being turned into a tune, the narrative is like so important. Yeah, Dragon Engineer. I'll I'll, I'll work some more. I, I I didn't really explore like a Jolted Awake build of Goblin Engineer. We can maybe even play like you can play like the uh, 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 amulet and the the energy artifacts and like loop those for some value, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, heat off the top to like force a counter spell would be pretty sick. Oh my god, that that was uh, not the time to fatal push opponent. I love when our opponents don't ghost. <laughs> I'm gonna tell my kids this was Splinter Twin. Turn three. <laughs> this is uh this is kinda sick to turn three Kiki combo. Adding Flytrap. I did have a Naya build of this with Flytrap for a bit. Twin is on the BR to us. Well, I, I guess you can't jolt and awake this, but Twin would be better. Dude, this is like... <laughs> this is like... My, I don't know. My opponent used all of their mana every turn. They, they did miss a land drop, I guess. I don't know. That was, that was a pretty cool game. Do you fear missing out on twin combo? It's kind of a kind of loose. Okay, let me sideboard real quick. I'm gonna bring in this chain of the rocks for Kiki again. Just sideboard the same way, I think. Now you can relive the glory. You can relive. You can re-enter re-enter your arena. Now you can re because arena of glory. Re-enter your arena and relive your glory days with Kiki Jiki plus FOMO as soon as turn three. I think it's pretty good. You can't combo up if one has more life than cards in the library. Well, you deal two damage to them for every one card in your library. So it should be pretty fine. Okay, um, with the discharge of my hand, I probably do want to jolt it awake this. Although I think I'm just going to surveil here. Is the math not like Yogg? The math, you, you deal two damage for every one card you discard. Okay, I'm actually going to, this is kind of weird. I'm going to graveyard this ring. I'm going to graveyard this ring. And then, so now if my opponent plays Psychic Frog, I can go Galvanic Discharge, they discard two, and then I can just jolt it awake the ring. Um, I think that that makes sense. Wake with the 15. Thank you. Welcome back. 15 is one of my favorite numbers. Hell yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to go spend zero energy... Awake the ring. And this is this is why the title is Boros Jolted Awake and not Boros Kiki Jiki. We are kind of cold to a Harbinger though. Not if we uh don't get hit by it this turn. Three cards in their hand. Unearth an Oculus. That's okay. We have two heats, I guess. I think I'm gonna prioritize killing um killing the Oculus first. Maybe I should have like waited let them like fetch into turn for a surveil land, but they have already used two, so they probably won't. And I'm gonna wait to crack, crack the ring so they tap their fetch, because I don't have any white I guess I have one chain to the rocks. So maybe if they countered that I would I would draw them.
terms of ring that's why lab wasn't the problematic card well, well more so like ring is the ring is a the, is the problematic card yeah for sure i mean I, I know i'm just agreeing with you but yeah it's like now with like cards like lugan's labyrinth and to a much lesser extent jolted awake like and like the, the ring is, and like and like flage and guide of souls like the ring is like much better than it used to be because of like flage and ugin's lab and then tiny footnote jolted awake okay so oh one into four one uh let's run it back i think this deck is pretty cool But ring haters, I'm 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 on board. I'm on board. Okay, make shit fifty two months. Thank you, welcome back. Appreciate you.